Alleluia, Christ is risen. The Lord is risen indeed. Alleluia. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord be with you. Beloved friends, our reflection today is based on St. Luke's Gospel, chapter 24, verses 13 to 35. In our text today, we encounter Jesus walking with two of his followers on the way to Emmaus, just outside of Jerusalem. The two disciples are still in shock as to what has happened in Jerusalem a few days before, with the crucifixion of Jesus by the authorities. I don't imagine that their conversation was at all filled with any sense of hope. As, as in their conversation they point out, but we had hoped that he was the one to redeem Israel. They didn't realize that the person that they were talking to was in fact the person that they were talking about. They only came to recognize him when he broke bread with them at the table later on. Once again, we are led in the direction of the Eucharistic encounter with Christ. Christ made visible and present among us in the breaking of the bread. Important as it is that we know that it is indeed Christ's fullness that we encounter in the Eucharist, I think our eyes in this Gospel text today are being focused to a greater truth that lies hidden herein. And that is the truth that God is always present among us and reveals God's self so profoundly through the most simple things. The disciples in this text did not witness the resurrection. They didn't even recognize Jesus as he walked with them and spoke to them on the road. Indeed, these disciples could have missed him totally as he only broke bread with them because they invited him to stay with them as it was dark and they were concerned about his safety should he continue with the journey. See friends, the resurrected Christ in his resurrection did not host a spectacle and a grand demonstration of power. Rather, he was revealed in remote situations. Firstly, to women who came to continue embalming his body after the Sabbath. Secondly, to the disciples who were breaking bread together behind closed and locked doors in fear. And thirdly, to his hopeless disciples as they were walking to Emmaus. The resurrected Christ reveals his glory through profound simplicity. In the voiceless women in a patriarchal society, to the marginalized and hopeless believers in a seemingly lost cause, and to simple followers who extend hospitality, peace, and fraternal affection to him on the road to Emmaus. An old saying goes, nobody eats with their enemy. The simple extension of hospitality by these two disciples is a gesture of simple affection and concern. Jesus receives that gesture warmly and returns it with deep appreciation, the same deep appreciation made known in his blessing and breaking bread with him, revealing thereby the fullness of God's presence among them, in and through the same. We often look for God in the great miracles and in great miraculous happenings. We like to see God in those because those validate our image of God as almighty, triumphant, mighty in battle, hardcore. And because of that, like the disciples who were walking with Jesus in our story, we miss God who walks with us every day and at all times. God does not leave us, however. 
God walks with us and waits for us to invite him to enjoy our hospitality. And when we invite him, he opens the eyes of our hearts so that we see him and come to realize how long indeed he has been there with us. The miraculous happening here is not only in our breaking of bread with Christ, but in actual fact, it begins in our invitation of our fellow pilgrim to share in the hospitality of our very hearts. It is continued in our breaking bread with each other through various acts of love and charity, and it is brought to completion in our recognition of the risen Christ, of God, in our fellow pilgrim. Living the joy of the resurrected Christ, therefore, friends, is about being hospitable, especially to the stranger in the land among us. It is about proclaiming peace through various acts of charity. It is about our commitment to intentional, loving companionship to the stranger among us, thereby revealing the presence of God in that space. We are called, dear friends, to live this out, to live out the joy of the resurrected Christ. And we are called immediately during this time to begin that living of the joy of resurrected Christ in our homes, following the example of the disciples in our Gospel text of extending hospitality and love and charity to those around us, but also by drawing inspiration from the words of Saint Teresa of Lisieux, who says, we should miss no single opportunity of making some small sacrifice. Here, by a smiling look. There, by a kindly word. Always doing the smallest right and doing it all for love. And indeed, where charity and love abide, there we find miraculously God among us. Let us bow our heads and ask for God's blessing. May the God of love make your hearts more open to his love this Easter tide. May he open your eyes that you may see him whose glory is veiled in the unknown pilgrim accompanying you always. May he fill you with joy and hope for salvation in this world and in the life of the world to come. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be among you and among all whom you love and pray for this day and 